Okay, we're here to show you the old-fashioned way how to rehook your blade. We got a better way to do it, but here's the old-fashioned way. Who, for those guys that don't have a grinder or whatever, so you mount your file right on your bench, just like this. Little tiny nails, so they're out of the way. Your uh, hook blade is down to where you want to rehook it. So the first thing you do is get rid of that hook completely by going across. You don't want it to chatter. If it's chatter, and then ease up a little bit, you got too much pressure on it. But get it to go across, nice and smooth. Get rid of the old hook completely. Okay. Get rid of that all the way. Once you get it down, you see a nice smooth. Uh, file mark. There's a little bit left right here I want to get rid of and maybe a little bit right there. So using your fingertips push down in those ends just like that. Now you can see a file mark all the way across. That little bit's not going to matter. Next thing you do is um, you can take the ball off if you want, but I'm not going to mess with it because. Okay, in a smooth action without it chattering, you go back and forth just like a pendulum. It's a little slower to do it like this. We did it like this for a lot of years. We didn't use the grinder because sometimes when you grind the blade, it heats it up and it changes the temper and you don't want to change the temper on the blade but this takes a little practice to to get a nice bevel on it uh, it looks pretty good through here but I want to bevel a little bit more here and on this side but if you get about a 3 16 I want to bevel that a little bit more it's not enough Chattering, you try to figure out how to move it across there without it chattering. Sometimes there's a sweet spot on the file that works better. So That's why we use a grinder so we don't have to let it chatter but it's a little bit of chattering through here but the bevels it's getting there So it's got a pretty good bevel, and I think we're ready because I'm feeling a little bit of a lip bending that way. So you can flatten the bottom again, just like this, gently. And then you take this out. You put it in your hook blade machine. So that you've got about an eighth inch on both sides sticking up. You lock it down. You put this all the way to the bottom first. You put a little bit of oil on the blade and you be careful rub it across this way and not to slice your finger, you know, straight across. Always go across the blade with a little bit of oil and be careful. You start out a little bit slow like this. Not, not a lot of pressure right off the bat. What you want to do is fatigue the metal over little by little. You don't want to bend it all of a sudden because then you'll break the metal and uh, you'll ruin the hook and you got to start all over. So think of it like as a, uh, a big hunk candy bar. You can bend it over slow, but if you bend it too fast, it'll break it. So 
it's the metal that you're fatiguing. So then you move this up to about halfway and then go across again. You slowly work up your pressure. The more strokes you go across, the bigger the hook. So you just take a little more time to fatigue it over if you want a big old hook. Bigger hook's gonna gouge more. So it depends on what kind of scraping too. So bigger hook's not always better, but sometimes you might like it that way. And then when you go all the way to the top, you don't do it quite as much. Once you get to that point, pull this out, put it back in your scraper. If you have this out too far, it's going to chatter as you go across the board. So tuck it in a little bit so it's sticking out about 5 eighths, 3 quarter, somewhere in there. Tighten her down. Now this blade is, is bent over almost at a 90, but not quite. It's bent probably about like that. Not quite a, a 90 is like this, but you want it a little bit open like that. And as you file, you want to hit just the bottom. You don't want to file along the same plane as the bent part because then you file your hook too thin and then you blow it out going over notch you'll make wrinkles in it and blow little pieces off the end so when you file you're going to file just on the tip like this and real gently each time each time you file you don't need to really crank on it too much but I'll start out where you know with a nice file and just file that tip down just a little bit to adjust it. This file sucks. <laughs> Where's that red handle one? So, so you get a good file that works. And it, it's, it's actually better if you lay the scraper down tight onto something. So you're not up like this. There's too much movement. See, this is a, a much sharper file, but you just gently go across in one, one motion all the way across, and you'll get that edge just right. Let's go over here and scrape a little bit. just right to try a different angle you can open it up just a little bit you don't have it quite so uh, closed like this but I call that opening up closer to a 90 so just a little bit more open and the, the more the, the hook is worn down from your file the more you're going to want to open your file up because the, the metal is bent more at the top so you change your file angle just a little bit, the more you wear it out. See, this is working good. hickory so it's hard to scrape. You can also use water sometimes. We'll wet the board a little bit with a wrung out water rag and then scrape. We just highlight around knots and things like that. So it gives it a lot of character. And then the edges. If it chatters you can go the other way. And turn your blade at a little bit of an angle so it's more slicing and not shattering. If that's the type of scraping you want. Okay, so let's just say we 
We have another blade here we want to sharpen.